myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where did Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. Hello, I am Paul J. Salvino, and I am humbled to serve as the superintendent of the Maslin City Schools. On Tuesday, November 3rd, the Maslin City Schools will have a levy renewal on the ballot. This no new taxes renewal will be issue 32. Issue 32 was originally passed in 1996, and the dedicated residents of the Maslin City Schools have been extremely supportive every five years during elections since then. Issue 32 is a five-year renewal that equals no new taxes. Issue 32 will generate $2 million per year for our schools. With the recent loss of school funding due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this renewal will be critical for our organization. On behalf of the Maslin City Schools, I ask you to exercise your civic duty on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Thank you and go Tigers! Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Nate Moore Show, our show brought to you each week by Reliable Heating and Cooling in Maslin. I'm your host, Dave Sheets, and with me is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Nate Moore. Nate, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Coach, your Tigers have now won four straight after beating St. Ignatius last Friday night. Your Tigers came from behind in the second half. Besides beating McKinley, is that as, maybe as satisfying a win as you'll have? I mean, it was a good win. You're proud of the guys. Um, you know, the, the kids played really, really hard and um, came through in the end, um, you know, due to a couple of St. Ignatius mistakes and that we were able to capitalize on them. So, um, but I'm proud of the kids for playing hard and getting the win. It was a tough half. Uh, you were behind at the half. Um, but it seemed like the Tigers have that never say die attitude. How do you instill that in a football team? Um, I mean, our, our kids have played really hard from, from uh, the start of the season. Um, and I, I think that's due to the, the amount of work that we do every off season. And, you know, th this off season was different. We didn't get to really put the kids in the same situations we generally do. So, um, you know, most likely I, I'd say it's carryover from things that we've done in the past, you know, when the, when the seniors were juniors and the, and the juniors were sophomores and whatnot, because, um, you know, we didn't get to have the normal off season. Um, we didn't get to put the kids in, in as, as many tough and difficult situations as we normally do. But um, you know, by now that it's it's um, it's pretty well ingrained in these kids. Um, and you know, it's, you're you're building off of what's instilled in them at home too, in a lot of ways. So um, you know, it's it's a combination of things. But um, you know, this offseason certainly wasn't conducive to producing that, so it's, it's good to see it's there. Coach, your, your defense has been a pillar of strength this year. Uh, you hold Ignatius to just over 150 yards of total offense. You get two more picks. Uh, I thought your linebacking group played exceptionally well. Can you highlight some of those guys for us? Sure. Um, you know, our same linebacker is Jaden Wise, um, who, who's done a great job for us all year. Uh, that's a it's kind of a hybrid safety position for us, and he's got a unique blend of, of size and, and athletic ability and um, does a nice job for us out there. And then we, we played three guys that are inside linebacker spots. 
uh, Xavier Andrews, Nick Liebler, and Jamatius Portis, and all three of those guys have been playing really well. Um, you know, all of them bring you know a little bit something different to the table, but but they're all effective, and um, it's it's been a good unit for us this year. I know since you've been at Maslin, you always have talked about and, and preached about having a physical football team. What are some of the ways that you can kind of create that physical atmosphere and that that uh, tenacity? Well, I mean, you got if you want to be tough, you got to put yourself in tough positions and tough situations and. Um, you know, it, it starts in the weight room with Coach Studer, and you know, like I said, it, 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 this off season, you know, really didn't last. Do a lot of things that, that we usually do, but um, you know, I guess we were able to, to do enough. And then, you know, on the practice field, um, you know, um, it, you know, if you're going to be a tough football team, you better be tough up front, and that's where that kind of starts. And you know, John Mazer and Chip Robinson and J.P. Simon and Dave Weber are. Our O-line and D-line coaches have done a, a good job instilling those characteristics into those guys. On offense, you had 155 yards rushing, 162 yards passing. If you're interested in balance, it doesn't get any more balanced than that. Uh, is that something that you'd hope to be against Ignatius, or did, the, did you actually hope to run the ball more? Uh, I mean, we, we want to take what the defense has given us, um, but we, we, you know, we do start with saying that, that, that we want to run the football, you know, certainly, but. Um, um, you know, we want to take what the defense is, is giving us. Um, so, you know, we don't we don't go into any games saying we want to be, uh, you know, 150 yards rushing and passing. It's, it's not. A, there's only one statistic that matters, and that's do you win or do you lose. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only statistic that we're interested in. Um, but you know, in, in the in the moment on, on the field of play, you know, we've got to be smart and, and take what's what's out there, what's available, and. Um, but that, that starts with the run for us. All right. In a moment, we'll meet a Maslin Tiger football player, but first this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. There was a time when 10 miles to the gallon was acceptable. Today's 40 plus mile per gallon cars weren't even in the rear view mirror back then. Of course, this Linux air conditioner wasn't on the radar either. It's solar ready, the quietest, most energy efficient air conditioner you can own. It's time to live in the now. Call Reliable Heating and Cooling for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, call Reliable Heating and Cooling. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Thank you to Reliable Heating and Cooling. And joining me now is senior co-captain and Tiger quarterback, Zach Catrone. Zach, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you with us. Uh, congratulations on a tough win over Ignatius last week. Thank you. Uh, it was a very physical football game. You ended up getting uh, pressured a lot and forced to run quite a bit. Uh, tell us more about the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ignatius had a very strong, big defense. Uh, they did a very good job of taking away the deep ball, taking away the passing game. So uh, as you guys saw, it opened up the run game for us. Uh, it's kind of a blessing in disguise almost. Did they surprise you at all with uh, the way they lined up or, or played defense that night? Um, no. We, we watched a lot of film. and. They showed up in about the same defense as we thought. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did play their defensive backs a little bit further back than uh, we saw in film, but that's to be expected with our, uh, our weapons on the outside. So uh, other than that, no, they, they, they played what we expected. Let's talk about your offensive line a little bit. Uh, those guys uh, struggled a bit in the first half, but in the second half, they did a nice job of, of especially opening up some holes for the running game. Absolutely. Uh, those are my guys. Uh, <laughs> I love them all. They, they've been doing a great job dealing with unfortunate injuries. Uh, guys stepping up, our center, Jaden Woods, before the season hasn't played a snap of RC football, so he's doing a very good job stepping in. Uh, John Cooth and Terrence Rankle, experienced, uh, experienced veterans, doing a good job helping out the young guys. Dylan Gerritsen uh, and Todrick Lee at left tackle, he's, he's been doing a real good job in his first year starting varsity. Now the quarterback is the leader of the offense, yes, uh, no, no question about that. And in the first half especially, the offense was struggling. Absolutely. Uh, how did you maintain, as a, as a leadership spot, as a, as a co-captain, how did you uh, lead with trying to be positive? Absolutely. Um, my job is to be positive and make sure everyone else is. So uh, when I could see people were getting down, I took it upon myself to approach them and be like, listen guys, we still have two more quarters. Like this, it's only a one score game. Like we're, we're in this, we're fine, mm -hmm. we're going to be all right, we're the better team, we know that. So uh, 
I just, I just took it upon myself to make sure that my teammates knew that we just had to do our job. And if we did our job to the hardest we could, we were going to be fine. Now, we had Andrew Wilson Lamp on the show last week, and we talked about the importance of the quarterback having good chemistry with his receivers. From your perspective, what are some of the ways that you help create that chemistry? Um, just checking in on them, uh, making sure I can do anything that makes them feel comfortable and vice versa. Um, I obviously always want to have a great chemistry with our weapons because they are, I believe, the best receiving core in the nation. So uh, in order for it to work, we, we have to be on the same page. And uh, I, I've, I've tried, and we, we've done a good job at being on the same page and just communicating with each other. Well, this is McKinley Week. As a kid growing up in Maslin, what memories do you have of this game? Oh, man, a uh, lot. Um, <laughs> I remember as a little kid getting up at 6 a.m. and going and tailgating outside with my parents. Uh, it, it's just it's a very special game, and to finally be able to play in it, it's a, it's a, it's a dream come true. Well, this is your senior year. What does it mean to you to play in this game? Uh, like I said before, it's a blessing. It's a... Something you always dream, dream about growing up in Maslin, uh, the Maslin-McKinley game, and especially being home for my senior year, it's a blessing. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to get to play in it. One final question. When you look at the McKinley defense, what are some of the things that kind of jump out at you? Yeah, so uh, they play a 4-3-4, four, four, um, cover two a lot. They'll play some man. Uh, they're, they're very athletic in the secondary. Uh, they have talent up front, but it's nothing that we don't think we can handle. We, we believe we're the better team, and if we do our job, we believe we'll end with a win on Saturday. All right. Well, best of luck this week. Thank you, Mr. Sheets. All right. Zach Catrone of the Maslin Tigers joining us here on the Nate Moore Show. Stick around. We'll be back with Coach Moore after this timeout. Even though there's so much against us, you will see me choose to protect myself and my community from the coronavirus by wearing a face cover. And even with my face covered, you will see me making music and bringing light to all no matter the time. Join me in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because covering your face is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us together. And hey, welcome back to the Nate Moore Show. I'm your host, Dave Sheets, along with the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Nate Moore. Uh, Nate, we just had a nice conversation with your quarterback, Zach Catrone. Uh, talk about how Zach's game has improved this season as the, the weeks have gone on. Well, Zach's a fine quarterback for us. Um, you know, he, he's, he's the leader of our offense. He's a captain, and, um, you know, he's, uh, he, he's a kid that, that really – um, you can't you can't be around him for for but five minutes and, and you understand what what Zach's all about and what his mm -hmm. character is and um, you know that's a big part of of, uh, of the leadership on our football team so and you know he's he's, he's getting better every day about uh, running the show and and making our offense go and um, you know we're, we're really looking forward to, to things ahead and, and what Zach can do this week. Well, it is McKinley week. Um, it's Christmas in Maslin. It's a little different this year, as everybody knows. Um, has, has the pandemic and uh, the lack of activities this week changed anything at all in regards to how you and your coaches are preparing the team? I, I'd say no. Um, you know, what, what's canceled is canceled, and, and we just move on. You know, we don't worry about things that we can't control. Um, it's our job to prayer the team to, to win on Saturday, and you know that that would be our aim either way. So, no changes. Your first McKinley game was seems a long time ago now, back mm -hmm. in 2015. What are some of your memories of that first game and that first week? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that, I mean that first week it's like drinking out of a fire hose because <laughs> you you know even though you know what to expect on paper, it's it's a whole different ball game going through it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's a, it's a positive memory going through that for the first time. And, um, you know, and, and then other than that, in, in the game, I remember, you know, Dakota Dunwoody's interception um, mm -hmm. that put us ahead and, you know, thought that, that we were going to be able to get back on the field and, and get one more stop and secure that win. And, and it sure didn't happen. Dominique Robinson made a great play and, 
won the game with about 20 seconds to go. Has the fact that you've been involved with this game changed your aspect at all about your approach or anything involved that way? I'd say not at all. No, it's it's um, it's a unique it's a unique thing. Um, the 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 preparation and the uh, um, I'd say the, the weight of the game that that doesn't go away. It's it's a it's a heavy weight um, that that uh, everybody in our program bears th this week and, and through Saturday and. You know, we hope to be able to, you know, bring um, to Maslin another victory and uh, keep the victory bell at home and, um, you know, secure those bragging rights for another 365 days. Well, since that loss in 2015, your Tigers have won four in a row. You, you can realize how difficult it is to have any kind of a winning streak in this rivalry. What's been the key to the success? You know, our, our kids, our kids play hard, and, and we've had some talent. And yeah, you know, when you when you combine those things, you're you're, you're going to have some good football teams. And, and so we've had some good teams along the way, and you know, a little bit of luck mm -hmm. along the way too. You know, and um, you know, there's there's a couple of plays that you can think of. You know, that were uh, plays where you know Lady Luck turned her, you know, her, her face on us, and, mm -hmm. and and we were able to come through with a little little extra spark there, but. Um, yeah, so it's it's uh, you know it's a wild Saturday out there. I'll tell you that. As you prepared for McKinley this week, uh, what jumps out about this year's team? Uh, very good team, very well coached. Um, the quarterback's excellent, um, excellent runner. Um, really good at skill positions. Great receiving core. Uh, great great group of defensive backs. And. Uh, and a tremendous linebacker, number 16, Manny Powell's a, a really fine player and a tackle machine. And you know we're going to have to cover him up and get guys up on him and, and, and sustain blocks so that we can run the football. Offensively, have they changed much since what they were doing a year ago? Uh, pretty similar, mm -hmm. pretty similar to what they were doing before. A lot, a lot of gap scheme, a lot of key run, option, RPOs, um, with some shots down the field. So I think that, that's all pretty similar. You mentioned Powell, the linebacker, and their secondary. How will they line up across the front? Well, they're a they're a four three or four two defense. Really, it's semantics. It's whatever you want to call it. Whether that that guy's a linebacker or a nickel, really. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, you know, even front, um, mostly too high in the secondary. Some one high, some man, um, but uh, a lot of too high defense. Um, and, and two linebackers in the box for us. So, And we'll turn the tables for the last question. I know it's fairly early in the week, but how have your Tigers looked in practice so far? Well, we've got one practice in, um, and I'd say, you know, that was a pretty good Monday practice, but, uh, you know, we want, the, we want the week to ramp up as we go through it, so today's got to be better, and, you know, Wednesday better than Tuesday, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, But it was a good start. Very good. Well, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, we'd like to thank Coach Moore and Tiger co-captain Zach Cretrone for joining us on the show this week. This edition of the Nate Moore Show has been brought to you once again by Reliable Heating and Cooling of Maslin. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers. Thank you.
Massillon City Schools is proud to have one of the top career technical education programs in the state of Ohio, recently receiving a number one ranking of the 93 districts in the area of achievement. Our career technical education department offers 14 pathways preparing students for college and careers. All students have the opportunity to participate and compete in their career technical student organization, as well as obtain valuable experience in the field while earning aligned industry credentials and or college credit in high school. Visit MassillonSchools.org for more information. Welcome to another edition of Swing, featuring Tiger Spring Band Director Jason Neal. We're on the air with you every Wednesday night following the Nate Moore Show. Our show is brought to you each week by Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin. I'm your host, Vanessa Gerard, and with me is Mr. Neal. Welcome to the show, Mr. Neal. Thanks for having me, Vanessa. Tell us how last Friday night's halftime performance at the St. Ignatius went. Well, I thought the kids did a nice job. Um, we repeated our Muppet Show. Uh, we added a, you know, an extra song in there, the Rainbow Connection from the original Muppet movie and the Muppets have used that over the years and uh, I thought the band did a nice job with that pretty ballad uh, for the homecoming court. Um, overall I saw improvement from the first week's show to the second week's show and, that, and that's what we were looking for so uh, proud of the kids on that. That's good. Okay. What adjustments did the band have to make so that the timing with the fall homecoming program matched up? Well, this, this year we actually tried something different where we put the, the homecoming court right in the middle of our show. Usually we would, would do it more toward the end of our show. Yeah. And um, we thought it fit real well. Like I said, we used the Rainbow Connection as our ballad this year and it mm -hmm. fit right in with our Muppet theme. Good. Um, one of the things we had to really adjust was the timing of you never know how long things are going to actually take when you get to the introduction of a homecoming court like that. We can practice it on the field. In fact, the, the court did come up to our rehearsal and practiced with us, but you never know until you get there. You also can't predict, you know, if the referee is going to start the, the halftime clock before the field is fully clear of players and, and coaches from the other team uh, in this case. And, and that was the case the other night. So we actually had to have a backup plan. We had an extra song, uh, the Sesame Street theme, that we did not get to perform. And we had to make that decision right there on the, on the field based on how things were going. So the students were actually prepared to do that song uh, or not do that song. So I was uh, also impressed that yeah. we could make a in-game decision, so to speak, yeah. uh, and, and skip, skip a song so we had the option to do it or not. So. At this point in the marching season, what areas do you think the band is most strong in? I think uh, our sound is really is really improving. Um, you know, I think we have more more students playing and memorizing their music. Um, I think they're getting uh, getting better at learning routines. Uh, you know, as we as, as we've gone through the season, I, I see a a speed with which we're we're placing formations at practice. Um, I think, uh, you know, our pregame's getting stronger each week, you know, that, that we do it. Um, and I think there's just some good kids who are working really hard at what, at what we're asking them to do. And they're kind of getting familiar with the, the process. And, and so all things I'm, I'm seeing show that those are some strengths for us. Good. In what areas are you still looking for improvement? I think for me, um, just little fundamentals that you know are tough to, to really get everybody to do together. For example, uh, step size is still an issue that everybody's taking the exact same size of a step. Um, horn angles, you know, you want every instrument in every section to be at the exact same level. You know, I think those are areas where we're getting better, but we can still improve. You know. Uh, our, our, our knee height when we pick up our knees yeah. and things yeah. like that. Um, so more of the marching area, I, th I still think we can improve. I think our sound's improving. Um, so we're always looking for, for little things. Um, so yeah, that's, those are good questions, tough ones to answer, but we're always trying to assess where the, where the band's at. Yes. 
We'll have more with Mr. Neal here on Swing, but first, this word from Howard's Tiger Rags. Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin has the best selection of tiger apparel in the area. And once again, Howard's Tiger Rags is the proud sponsor of the Swing TV show on WHS TV. Be sure to check out their large selection of infant and toddler apparel. You can even dress up your favorite pet in tiger gear. See their large selection of memorabilia along with mugs and glasses and your favorite tiger jewelry. How about a license plate holder or a tiger hat? Howard's is one to fit your style. Stop in at Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin and don't forget to like them on Facebook. Thank you, Howard's Tiger Rags, and welcome back to Swing. This is Beat McKinley Week, and normally the band has a very busy week. But because the schedule has changed a lot because of the pandemic, tell us what your schedule looks like this week and compare it to what you've done in the past. Yes, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, we were counting up the events that we would normally do that we're not doing this year. And there's six different events this week that we're not able to do um, because of the pandemic. So. That includes like our football booster meeting, our yeah. touchdown club, our open house, the concert that we do in the gym, um, the pep rally, the bonfire, the parade, you know, so yeah. there's, there's a lot of events that we aren't able to do. Um, but we are still uh, going around the town on Friday with our squad leaders and our seniors, which is a, uh, I think, one of the best traditions we have and one that, that a lot of the students look forward to the most. So we've. Yeah. We've tried to keep Friday as, as, as normal, I guess you could say normal, as possible. Um, and I think that's just really important to get out into the community and play. Now, we'll be a lot more outside than we would. Instead of marching into places, we'll be outside marching, um, trying to keep things safer and uh, adjusting to that. But um, we're, we're looking forward to Friday. and. You know, there's just a different feeling even at rehearsals. You know it's McKinley week. You yeah. know uh, this game is coming. It's, it's Saturday at 2 rather than Friday night. It's, yeah. So it's set apart um, regardless of how many fans will be there. It's mm -hmm. a special game, and, and we're excited to be a part of such a great rivalry. Yes. What does McKinley game mean to you on an individual basis? Uh, well... Uh, Kind of piggybacking off of what I was just saying, it's such a great rivalry, such a great tradition in history, um, and I love it. I mean, personally, it just gets me excited. It gets me charged up. Uh, you know, from the moment last week's game ended, all attention turns to this game this week. Yeah. You know, we're marching back to the armory, doing cheers about Beat McKinley, and, and um, I think, you know, personally, it's just, it's still exciting to me after all these years, and uh, that's why I love to be a part of it. I love to watch the students um, get so excited about it, and uh, like I said, there's something really cool about a Saturday afternoon game versus a Friday yeah. night game uh, that just gives it a, a different atmosphere. So I love it. Um, you know, I got to be in, in, you know, when I went to Ohio State, I was involved in another big rivalry um, and and this one is is very very similar on a on just a little bit smaller scale but to the people of of Maslin and Canton it just means so much to be part of this and yes. it's 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 a privilege to be uh, to be in this rivalry yes it is the senior members of the band will be recognized this game on Saturday mm -hmm. how many senior ban band members are there and tell us more about what they've meant to the band program mm -hmm. We'll be recognizing 28 of our senior band members at this half time, um, this this week's pregame, yes. and um, I think you know each class of seniors is different and unique, um, and they're all special in their own way. This particular senior class, um, they've really they've loved being a part of the band. Um, they they have done so well through this year, through all these changes. I just I can't say enough about how proud I am of them, and and their handling of all the things that we're not getting yeah. to do. You know, they could have easily um, focused on what we haven't gotten, yeah. but I think they've done a good job of of embracing this situation and um, leading the band in, in a good way. 
So I'm, I'm going to be, you know, forever grateful to these seniors, and they mean, they mean a lot to me. Yes. Please give us details about this week's halftime show as our Tigers take on McKinley. Well, um, this week's halftime show is going to be our senior show. And, you know, we usually don't do that for the McKinley game, but a couple things prompted that decision. Number one, they picked some wonderful music yes. uh, for their favorite songs over the last three years, and we're going to use those songs this week. They picked uh, The Greatest Show from The Greatest Showman. Yes. They picked uh, Sing, 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 which is just an all-time all -time classic swing number that yeah. everybody loves. And then they picked uh, 42nd Street, which came from uh, a show in 2017 when they were freshmen, uh, to which we did a dance number with a tap drum break in the middle of it, just real big production number. Um, and I thought those songs, and our staff agreed, that those songs were strong enough to really put them out for you know our McKinley yeah. show which we try to make that our biggest show of the year. Um, in addition to the fact that these seniors have lost so much, um, we wanted to say thank you at the McKinley game and just yes. make that game all about our seniors this year. And um, again, they, they mean so much. They've done such a great job that we, we didn't hesitate to make this week's show our senior show. Good, yes. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of Swing. Swing is brought to you all season long by Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin. I'm your host, Vanessa Gerard. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers. Bye, sweetie. I love you. Bye, Mommy. I love you. No matter where life takes you, MCTV helps make sure you're never far from home. Hi. Are you being good for Daddy? Yes. Can you read a bedtime story? MCTV connects you to home because that's what matters most. Good night. Sweet dreams. MCTV. We go the extra smile. I joined cosmetology because I've always loved coloring hair and different colors and makeup. I joined media because I've always had a passion for all things related to media. I've always had a passion for teaching other people, especially topics that I'm interested in. I want to pursue a career as an orthopedic surgeon. And so when I saw that we had this class, I immediately circled it on my schedule and was excited to join. This class has made me better because it made me very responsible. I like the relationships that I've developed in this class. The girls that are in here with me, I've really grown close with all of them. I joined this class because I enjoy helping others and I want to make a difference. Even like just making something and having people go, wow, that's really interesting. 
It means the world. It was just a really good environment to be in. It was real hands-on, and it was just something I really wanted to do. I joined the construction trades to gain experience in the job I want in the future. Everything that this class has taught me will account for my career in the future. Before I came to this class, I was unemployed and Ms. Markley helped me get a job. I'm going to use what I learned in manufacturing in order to better decide my career. It gave me more knowledge on cars and gave me plans to go in the auto industry. Maslin CTE works for me. 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 Works for me. For me. For me. For me. Maslin CTE works for me. For me.